And once again, it comes down to which one, book or movie, put together the better story, with the better plot, the better morals, and the better I'm gonna lose, aren't I? All right, before Matt Hatter rips L. Frank Baum a new one, I will put up a feeble defense for the book. First of all, the structure is vastly different for both. L. Frank Baum was never intending to write a coherent story. He was writing more of a series of adventures for Dorothy and her companions and Oz, each of them coming to the same point, which is that the companions had what they were looking for all along. We got it, Frank. Thanks. The movie focuses more on character development and has a more compact storyline. Neither one of these methods is inherently better, although it is telling that the movie made the same point once that L. Frank Baum felt the need to make 20 times, but it's still a difference worth noting. Also, upon re-watching the movie, I found myself raising an eyebrow or two at the final message. And I'm not going to leave here ever, ever again. So the message is to stay home and live with your parents for the rest of your life? But for all the weaknesses that the movie has, the book is well able to match and surpass them. Hatter, thank you. It's interesting to know that the book started off as really popular and has since become less so as better literature is published, while the movie started off as basically a flop and has since become a classic. First off, let's take a look at that message that L. Frank Baum fairly bludgeons us with. You'd think that with that many times stating it, he'd actually get it right when it comes time for the companions to get their items from the wizard. See, in the movie, they don't get the literal items. They get proof that they already had them. A diploma for the scarecrow, a badge of courage, <laughs> get it, for the lion, and a plastic ticking heart clock thing for the tin man. I don't know. But in the book, they actually get the literal items. Sort of. Scarecrow gets a brain made out of bran. Again, get it. Tin Man gets a heart of silk and sawdust, and the lion drinks some sort of concoction that the wizard claims is courage. So despite the fact that the audience certainly learns that they've had what they're looking for all along, the companions don't. And isn't that kind of the point? And ultimately, that's the main problem with the book. L. Frank Baum was certainly groundbreaking in the field of children's literature, but the man could not tell a story. By the time the companions get what they want, the story should be pretty much done. And in fact, in the movie, it is. In the book, the companions get what they want, and the story's only about two-thirds of the way done, as L. Frank Baum takes us on another long, drawn-out adventure to the south, proving many, many times that, once again, the companions had what they were looking for all along. We got it, Frank. Thanks. The book also has virtually no climax. The movie really builds up this battle between the Wicked Witch of the West and Dorothy. There's suspense, action, and of course the companions using their gifts, which they've had all along, to help save their friends. In the book, the companions do... nothing. Absolutely nothing. The Scarecrow's in a tree, the Tin Man's in a ditch, and the Lion's locked up. They do nothing. In fact, Dorothy doesn't do much either. She sneaks food to the Lion, and she eventually melts the Witch, but even then it's just because she was throwing a temper tantrum. And then, of course, there's the rule of three. The rule of three, I don't... What, what's, yes, what's Mad Hatter, one? rule of three! The world's favorite literary game show where we try to take this good, strong, symmetrical number and use it in a way that actually makes sense. And for today's contestants, we have movie critic Matt Hatter against world-renowned children's author L. Frank Baum. Are you ready to play? Um, sure? All right then, here's your first question. Dorothy and her companions go to see the wizard individually, and for each of them, the wizard takes on a different form. For Dorothy, he takes on the form of a giant floating head, just like in the movie. Now, there are three companions left, and three forms that the wizard can take. A beautiful woman, a wild beast, and a ball of fire. Based on what you know about these companions, how would you match up the companions with the forms? Well, it would make sense for the wizard to play up to the fears of each, so he would probably give the ball of fire to the scarecrow, since fire is the only thing that he fears. Uh, and then the, the Tin Man uh, used to love a beautiful woman, and so he would be the beautiful woman for the Tin Man to throw him off guard, and then he would be the horrible beast for the lion, for, for obvious reasons. Yes, that would make sense, but let's see what L. Frank Baum said. He decided to give the woman to the scarecrow, the beast to the tin man, and the ball of fire to the lion. 
That makes absolutely no sense! All right, next question, Hatter. Dorothy and her companions are venturing into the land of the Winkies to kill the Wicked Witch of the West. The Wicked Witch sends three hordes of animals after them. A murder of crows, a pack of wolves, and a swarm of bees. Based on what you know about the companions, how would you match up the companions with the hordes of animals? Um, okay. Give the scarecrow to the crows, because he can scare them away. Uh, give the wolves to the lion, he can fight them off. Uh, and then give the bees to the tin man, because he's made of tin and the bees can't hurt him? Good guess, Hatter! Let's see what Frank said. Apparently, the Tin Man will take on the wolves, momentarily forgetting that he hates taking the life of any living thing, and in fact cried over stepping on a beetle earlier in the book. <clears throat> the Scarecrow will, in fact, scare away the crows, and then the Tin Man will kill them, and then the two of them will work together to protect the others from the Bees, completely leaving the lion out. No, no, wait, I see, uh, L. Frank Baum has added a fourth category. The lion will scare away the Winkies. Nope, sorry, you lose, Frank. Thanks for playing. In short, Baum's lack of character development in the protagonist, his inability to have a coherent and compact plot, and his complete lack of respect for storytelling conventions like the Rule of Three are absolutely infuriating. And though some of its morals are questionable, the movie truly does tell a vastly more compelling and entertaining story. Well, Matt, I'm glad to see that you're taking this all so well. Well, yeah. I mean, I knew going in that the movie was going to be better. That's too bad, too. The book could have been really something. If only. If only. When this land bomb did explore, he could have told a better story. But sadly, he did not. But it could have been wondrous with applause, both great and thunderous, if it only had a plot. It developed many fans as this little girl from Kansas faced her predicament. But the author who made her could have made her that much greater if she only had dramatic and compelling character development. And yes, I see that it was he who inspired those who now write for the child. But that doesn't mean I have to like his style as his books sell. But all the while, he does nothing to add conflict aside from comic effect. There are no real foes. I should write an open letter that this could have been much better If he'd only given us an adequate antagonist, brought things together that he'd set up before, used the rule of three in a way that actually makes sense, provided an actual climax, and brought the story to a satisfying close. If only. If only, if only I had brought the external hard drive with me so they could actually play the song that I put on iTunes.